I'm gonna say good morning because I am filming this at, I'd say it's about seven o'clock in the morning, which is my absolute favorite time of the day. It's that peaceful, quiet time in the morning where in the summertime, it's not too hot. So I like to come outside, water my plants, drink my coffee, and just kind of enjoy the quiet time before the storm, the calm before the storm, before the day gets busy and it gets going. Everybody in the house is still asleep. And so this is my morning routine. And I thought that this was a good time to just kind of do an update vlog. I wanna start off by saying thank you to all of you because so many of you are continuing to keep my family's health and safety in your prayers. And really, it means more to me than you can even imagine. A lot of you continue to ask how my son Ray is doing. For those of you who are tuning in to my channel, you maybe haven't been subscribed all that long. My son Ray is 25 and he did get COVID pretty early on. I would say he got it about three and a half months ago and he got very, very sick. And he got so sick that I brought him home. He lived about an hour away. He was sick for about three or four days. And I just was so overcome with fear and worry for his health that I needed to bring him home. And so if you haven't seen that vlog, I'll link it down below and you can see the protective measures that I took and the precautions that I took to bring him home to keep myself and the rest of the family safe. But as for Ray, I will tell you he is doing really well, minus the fact that he has not regained his sense of smell or taste. Um, those are just kind of the last lingering side effects that he is experiencing from getting the virus. His doctor as of now um, still just does not want to give him um, the medication that is needed to help bring that back because he still has the antibody of the virus in his system and it could stimulate the virus, I guess, to reoccur. And so he has to wait like, I guess, five to six months for the antibody to completely clear from his system before she's comfortable giving him this steroid that he needs. And so with that being said, Ray is doing well. Um, I do have two men in my family that are on the front lines of this. Uh, my husband, Jeff, is an LA County fire captain. And um, Jeff is still staying in the motorhome on the side of the house because he is just coming into contact daily with COVID patients um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, LA County Fire has had a breakout of people contracting the virus, two of which were at Jeff's station. Luckily, Jeff has tested twice in the last eight, nine days, and it has come up negative. And so thankfully, he didn't contract it when this firefighter was at his station. So we just can only hope and pray that he continues to be safe at work and doesn't end up with it. And so because he really is um, exposed to it so much, and we've got my daughter, Kayla, who has an underlining health issue, and with Allie now too, you know, they've got those stories out, how kids are reacting to it. We just don't wanna take any chances. And as I can appreciate that other people may have a separate opinion than me, that is the great thing about diversity is, you know, diversity is awesome because if we all have the same opinion, it would be boring. And so, yeah, so that's the precautions that we're taking right now. It's just been a bit stressful because we really just didn't know if Jeff was gonna come up positive or not, if he was gonna be asymptomatic. And so for about a week, we were really just kind of stressed out because Allie did have a bit of contact with him when she was swimming in the pool. I had surprised Allie and I had gotten her these tube runners. They're these motorized tubes for bumper boats in our pool. And I was watching Channel 5 News and um, there's a guy named Rich on Tech that comes on and he always has these little 
fun techie gadgets and whatnot. And so when I saw these two burners on there, I just thought like, wow, that would be so fun for Allie to have those in the pool. And so I got two of them and I surprised Allie with them. And so I'm gonna insert that clip here. <laughs> you, you gotta steer it. <laughs> She's waving the air. Can I just tell you that every time I go out to water the plants or do anything, the first thing Ellie does is jump into those boats. I did have to get some rechargeable D batteries because batteries are stinking expensive and it takes six batteries per bumper boat. And so that's a total of 12 batteries. And when I bought just regular Duracell ones for 12 of them, it was $20 and they only lasted like three days. And so I just thought like, wow, my word, we need to get rechargeable ones. And so thankfully, Amazon has a line of batteries under Amazon Basics that you can buy. And for, I believe $40, I could get 12 rechargeable batteries and the charger. And so I thought that that was a great buy and it's gonna save me a ton of money because she is in these bumper boats all day, every day, every chance she gets. And so she's been a happy camper having those and it just makes my heart happy that something like that makes her happy and gives her something to smile about and look forward to every day. And so, yeah, what have we been up to though? Um, right now, Kayla is back at work. She had to go back to work. Um, in and out really needed people to return back to work. And so this past Friday, which was just um, four days ago, Kayla went back to work after three and a half months. And so she was a bit nervous, but I will say that she was really happy when she came home and her mind was at ease at um, the measures in and out was taking to really keep their employees and their customers safe. And so when Kayla told me about it, I was happy um, too. And it really put my mind at ease because I really just wasn't sure what to expect when she was gonna go back to work. And so I was just fearful. Although we do take our own precautions when she comes home, um, as well. I feel like if she just um, stays uh, diligent about washing her hands and not touching her face and just, you know, uh, taking a shower when she gets home and putting those clothes right into the washing machine, I think that we should be good. The last video that I uploaded was a Dollar Tree haul and it was my last one for a bit. I also told you that I made a trip to Michael's as well and I picked up some really great items at Michael's that I wanted to share with you. I'm gonna insert that footage here because it was a video that I was gonna do separately but I decided not to. I figured that I'd just add it into today's video. And the finds that I found were finds on paper and twine. <laughs> Of course, twine. I stay true to my nature. I picked up some of this twine. It was originally $3.99 and I got it for $2. It was half off. There is um, 120 feet on each spool 
And so I have some farmhouse ideas using colored twine. So I picked up this beautiful chocolate brown. I love my browns. Picked up a spool of black. This beautiful fall harvest pumpkin orange. Loving that. Gotta have a white because why not? And an absolutely gorgeous green, like a pea green. I love it. So I picked these up at $2 a piece and spent, what, $10 on 120 feet of twine per spool is amazing at $2 a piece. I also had to go scurry through and look through their Craft Smart paper packs. And for those of you who follow me on paper crafting DIYs, I absolutely love them. They are very budget friendly, easy to do. Um, and you can very easily do it with these paper packs that you can get at Michaels. They're by Craft Smart, and they are on clearance for $4.97 a pack. Now, I will tell you that there were some mixed in with the clearance packs that were $19.99, and so I put those back. And so there were three packs at $19.99. I'm not gonna pay 20 bucks for one of these packs, but $4.97, you better believe I will pay it. And so I found this one, which is amazing. This one is a fall embossed one. And I'll kind of show you close up, wait, that it is the solid cardstock, but all the cardstock is imprinted, embossed with fall stuff. So we've got leaves, we've got pumpkins, we've got trees, we've got happy autumn and Thanksgiving. I just think that it's gorgeous. And so I think that this paper will make for some great paper crafting DIYs in the fall like Halloween, Thanksgiving time, amazing for $4.97. There's 42 sheets in this one, and it's a heavy duty cardstock in these packs. I also picked up the Mint To Be, cause this one as well was on clearance. And this one here doesn't have 42 sheets, but it has 48. And um, this is just a real fun one. I'll kind of scroll through it just a little. And uh, it's just a summery one. I've had this one before and I liked it so much and used it so much that when I saw it was on clearance, I picked up another. This one is one that I have never seen before. Coastal Cove. I love this. It's got so many cute like ocean prints in it. And I just love all the paper in it. And so again, something fun, something different to switch up my style when I'm doing those paper crafting DIYs. Oh, I guess I picked up two of this fall one. I didn't even realize that. Ha! Huh. Okay. And um, this one is called Self Made and um, it's got like gymnastics here, which was kind of strange, but it had some really neat prints in there that I just loved. And so again, for $4.97, I could not beat this. And so if you have a Michaels near you and you like to paper craft with me, I would definitely head on over there and look at these Craft Smart paper packs because they are $4.97 on clearance, which is a great buy. And for $4.97, if you get one pack, you can do some amazing paper crafting DIYs with me that you're gonna love. And then you're gonna see how easy it is to paper craft, and then you're gonna get addicted to it. You're gonna wanna do it with me all the time. I think now there's a new normal for so many of us, and it's just strange to look back at how life used to be, you know, five months ago and how that was our normal. And now we have a completely different normal. Five, six months ago, twice a week, Allie would tutor at our local library with our retired teacher. Uh, Miss Newhauser retired four years ago and we've been tutoring with her for three since Allie was in first grade and now Allie's in fourth. And Allie has tutored twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays for about an hour and a half with her. And it's something that Allie's always enjoyed. And I feel like it's something that has always been beneficial for Allie and her academics. And so when the outbreak happened, um, because Miss Newhauser is in the high risk, we obviously weren't tutoring anymore. The libraries were closed down and that was something that Allie really missed. And so we received a text from Miss Newhauser last night saying that she has figured out Zoom and that she feels very confident that she can help the kids through Zoom and tutor them. 
And so I just thought that was amazing. Allie just could not wait. She says, can we start tomorrow? And so Allie gets to start tutoring again with her, uh, with Miss Newhouser, I guess I should say. Um, I did receive an email from Allie's school saying that school was going to resume two to three days a week in person and the other days online starting August 5th. I, however, am, and I hope that um, so many of you can just respect my opinion and know that we all have different opinions on this given our circumstances of our family and whatnot but I have chosen not to send Allie to school in person as of yet. Um, if you've been following me and you've seen my other vlogs, you know that online schooling, uh, it, as it may be for some, it's not for me, but um, do I need to do it for the safety of my family? Absolutely. Is it something that I'm gonna do 100% and put 300% into? Yes, it is because it's Allie's education. Is it something that I can do long term? No, it's not, but I'm willing to do it because of the safety of my family. And I don't feel like it's safe that Allie or any kids in my state anyway can return to school safely. I live in California, like I have stated, and right now I live in LA County and this is the epicenter of the virus of California. And so the surge and the spike is just scary that's going on right now and um our numbers are worse than they've ever been they're worse than at the height of the beginning of this when they thought it was so bad and it looks like they may be getting ready to implement another stay at home order which is just absolutely sad and um you know and i say sad because you know obviously people need to work and they need to work in a safe environment but they also need to survive and they have, you know, bills and food and, you know, essentials that they need. And so that's the double edged sword to this is, you know, where do people turn to if they don't have the the capability of getting food and paying their bills? You know, I just, it's so scary. And so I just hate to see that happening, but for the health and well-being I, I don't know what else they do honestly I don't have an answer and I don't agree or disagree I just I just hate this altogether like so many of us do and so with that being said I had to opt out of sending Allie to um, in-person school which really made me sad but I'm hoping that maybe by Christmas break when the kids have a month off of school that this will have died down enough and like just, I, I don't know, just died down enough that I can send Allie to school two or three days a week or five days, whatever it is at the time. I'll reevaluate it and see what I'm comfortable with. Um, I absolutely think that um, kids need to be in the environment of school and in-person learning. I feel like it's more beneficial than online. Does online work? Yes, it does. Homeschooling works. I respect any parent who homeschools because it was the hardest thing I ever had to do when this whole thing broke out. I just was like, hats off to every parent that homeschools their child because it is hard and it may get easier, but I did not find that easier part of it yet. You know, maybe because I was thrown into it so quickly and so abruptly. Um, it did get a little easier, but it just was hard in general for Allie. And I felt like Allie benefits more from in-person learning. And so that's definitely something that I'm looking forward to her doing again. When it's going to be, I don't know. But I can tell you it's not going to be on August 5th. Um, I just don't see this going away in three weeks. I see it getting worse because of the 4th of July. Other than that, uh, Kayla is in her third year of college. And this semester, she too has opted to do online. Um, I think that this is her last semester before she can transfer to Cal State Bakersfield because she's now got her AA. She's going to go for her bachelor's degree. And so um, I think the transfer uh, credits that she needed, she needed to take another semester because it was different for Cal State Bakersfield versus Antelope Valley College. And so she was missing a couple classes. But as for anything else, I think um, that that really is 
all that's been going on in our life. I got to see my dad the other day for the first time in four months. He uh, and Kathleen drove out here and uh, we stayed about 40 feet apart with our face masks gone. They came in the backyard and I Lysoled down a couple of chairs for them. And we sat at opposite ends of the yard and they got to see Allie swim and we got to just chat with them for a little bit. My dad got to see my garden. And so, um, you know, it's definitely weird. I wanted to give my dad a big hug. Um, he's really just doing amazing. My dad has lost 60 pounds through um, this whole staying at home and I'm just so proud of him. He has made a life change and they surprised me when they showed up and I saw that my dad had lost so much weight. It just put me into tears and all I wanted to do was just wrap my arms around my dad and give him a big hug. But you know, I, I can't and for the safety of my dad, I wouldn't because my husband's a firefighter and he is exposed, which means even though we're taking the precautions of Jeff being in the motor home, um, I could potentially make a mistake and expose myself and then expose my dad. And I just couldn't live with myself if I hurt my dad and put him and Kathleen's health into jeopardy. And so they really are just staying at home and being careful and they're willing to ride this out as long as they need to, as I think um, most of us are. And you know what, I've got to tell you, I've got another fun video coming up. So in my past vlogs, I showed you that I had a real co cool garden and I had a plant that was growing up out of my blueberry bush that I didn't know what it was and it came to be a sunflower. And I ended up finding out that a neighbor two doors down had a huge sunflower garden. And so a lot of you told me that, uh, it probably grew from a bird who dropped a seed and you were probably most definitely right and it came from their house. And I was just so excited to see that the center of the sunflower had all these black sunflower seeds. And so I thought I would do a video on how to do your own sunflower seed from a sunflower. And my neighbor, actually, we were walking to the mail the other day and I said, hey, you know, I had a couple sunflowers just kind of randomly grow in my yard. and. I didn't know where they came from, but obviously they came from her yard and she just thought it was so funny. And so the other day she came to the door with a bag of the sunflower heads that had a ton of seeds in them and thought that it would be great for Allie to be able to go through the process of making her own sunflower seeds. And so I thought I'd bring you along on that journey and show you just how fun it is and how we can make our own sunflower seeds from a sunflower. So you'll want to stay tuned for that video and some of my upcoming DIYs using some of the items from my Michaels haul that I brought to you and some of the items that I just picked up from the Dollar Tree to keep me going over the next few weeks. Until then, everybody, I hope that you're staying safe, you're staying healthy, and you're staying positive. And I hope you enjoyed this update. And if you want to see more vlog updates about what we're doing in the next few weeks, just leave me a comment in the comments below and I go off of your feedback. Until next time, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive, and stay at home. And bye for now, everybody.